together. You know, I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to get down to see the film down there. It airs at midnight, I guess. Midnight, right? Friday nights. Yeah, that's good, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we're going to... Pioneer Theater. Yeah, right you are. Well, that's way over at Alphabet. Uh, Third uh, and Avenue A. R a. Oh, yeah, right at Tompkins Square. Yeah. yeah, right near there. And um, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program. Uh, Bob Levitz, and he's a producer. He's a film producer. He's also a, a person who's been very interested in politics. He was involved back in the 1960s uh, with the the movement, as it were, uh, from a, and, and celebrating, in a certain sense, the hippie contribution. His film, Gold, which is playing Midnights uh, every Friday downtown, is pro we're going to be showing some clips from. And uh, he's got a very interesting uh, take on the human condition. And we've been wanting to do a program. And well, Bob, welcome very, very much. To Thank you. It's my pleasure. Harold. My pleasure to talk with you. I did read a little bit of your bio and so forth. But could you, like I said, share your background? Born and raised. Milwaukee. Well, I was born in Springfield, Illinois. And then the family moved up when I was very young mm -hmm. up to Milwaukee. OK. And what was your dad up to? In that well, my dad worked for a, a plastics firm mm -hmm. and uh, did quite well, mm -hmm. uh, succeeded. He, he'd suffered uh, during the Depression like so many other people. Yeah. But he hooked up. He was a good salesman, mm -hmm. and he passed on that to myself. Uh, you know, it's a good tradition in our family. Sales. There was an mm -hmm. I, there was an interview with you that had biomaterial. You said you were born into a privileged family. Very definitely. And, uh, and is that on economic terms, or social, or, uh, warmth of the family? No, warmth setting? of the family, mm -hmm. uh, economic terms for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. We, you know, as I say, my dad came from, he, he had to drop out of college. He only did one year because of the Depression. Yeah. But then he was a hard worker. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. he brought in the bacon. Mm -hmm. And he kept moving up and uh, hooked up with a good company up in Milwaukee and uh, went on and made a lot of money. It was and, in uh, plastics, did you say? In plastics and uh, under carpeting. And, yeah. Uh, you must have loved the movie The Graduate. Oh, yeah. You that's remember very he comes similar. up and he, says, he whispers into his <laughs> that's plastic. That's right. I've forgotten you know. about yeah, that. You yeah, you should learn concert. That's right. That, you know? I, I, of course, that, uh, that resonated when I heard that. I would have thought so, yeah. yeah. And your mother? I don't mean to pry. But no, fine. No, yeah. my mom came, uh, she came from a German family uh -huh. in, uh, in Springfield, and my, fa my grandfather was uh, head of the AMA of Illinois. Oh, really? American yeah. Medical Association. Right. Wow, and, that's uh, a big, important job. Yeah, yeah. he was a big shot. He was, uh -huh. uh, he was a kingmaker in Springfield. He used to... Every Saturday night, he'd uh -huh. have the poker game uh, uh -huh. at the Abraham Lincoln Hotel, <laughs> and okay. all the politicians had to play in that game. Yeah. And uh, you know, if they didn't play in that game, they didn't, they, they didn't get the committee. That uh, was one of them, uh, their smoke-filled rooms. Absolutely, right? cigars, yeah, absolutely. Spittoons, <laughs> I wonder, maybe you know that kind uh, yeah, of. Yeah, well, yeah, he did it. He did. This. There was a lot of good stuff happened with ward uh, healers and uh, you know politic politicals at the local level. That was, uh, you know, that 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 system can be helpful to. Absolutely, get real services and mm -hmm. to the to the people. Well, as my, my dad's family was from Chicago, and that's mm -hmm. what we used to say in Chicago. Daily and, company. Yeah. yeah, vote early and vote often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got that. That's kind of a joke, but you want to do that. But anyway, so you and then you 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 moved up to uh, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Well, yeah, Milwaukee's a very very interesting city. Is you it know, really? Uh, yeah. You know, they have, uh, politically, particularly, mm -hmm. they had four socialist mayors. Okay. I don't think any other city in the country. You know, they were formed after 1848, mostly with the Germans uh, really? settling. The people after were kicked out of After the revolution Europe. in yep. Europe, yeah. Yep. yeah. So it became a very progressive city. Uh, and, yeah. and it was an industrialized city. And it's a very, uh, it has lots of things. Al Alice Chalmers, you remember that? I do and remember. Harley yeah. Davidson. Of course, yeah. And all yeah. these big companies come from uh, Laffey, uh, Lafayette. Briggs, Briggs and Stratton. Yeah, those are all uh, motorcycle companies. Well, they're all, uh, you know, manufacturing, manufacturing yeah. companies. Yeah, and you had Bob Lafayette, or who was a Yo, famous Yeah, Lafayette. Yeah, uh, right. LaFollette, I'm sorry. LaFollette, that's Bob right. LaFollette. That Bob LaFollette. Yeah. And that was, that was Wisconsin? He yeah, always definitely. I sort of associate Wisconsin, Minnesota, but particularly Wisconsin. Wisconsin being progressive. Hubert Humphrey? No, he was from Minnesota. Yeah, but in but that area. You know, oh, yeah, that th there's a great, North, great uh, tradition Central. of progressive politics from uh -huh. Wisconsin. Yeah, right. And you never know how they're going to vote. Um, and then along came uh, George Wallace and 
They voted for George Wallace. So. Well, that's down south. No, but he came when oh, he, he was came ran and made president, campaign. and he did better than anybody expected in Wisconsin. So wow, you yeah. can never predict what's going to happen. Well, in the Wisconsin. tides have changed a little bit. I was from Detroit, like you and I were sharing and everything, and Detroit was just a wonderful place in a certain sense to grow up. All there's always differentiations of class all through history, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if you're up the rung a little bit, you see things differently than if you're being you know, oppressed by the people that are up the rung, that kind of thing, and why we accept that so uh, easily, the general idea of class and distinctions and so forth is a thing I'm really interested in. But it, it, Detroit was uh, a lot of trees, it was great, because the automobile industry was there and everything was doing really well. People yeah. could come out of what was agriculture at the turn of the 19th, 20th century and then came into the factories, and yeah. there were jobs, and Mr. Ford that's made five-hour day. There were jobs. You just hit it. That's um, what it was, yeah. In the 50s, uh, there were jobs. However, though, that's I think that that's the... You remember that film, Operation Abolition? No, I don't. I'm sorry. That was the one that the first time when they were doing the House of Un-American Activities. Oh, Mr. Uh, um, McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy yeah. was doing that. Wasn't and that, that influenced me more than anything. That's how I got into filmmaking. I okay. didn't realize it. I had to think back. Yeah, we... Is, uh, mm -hmm. The controversy of that film, because it's when editing, mm -hmm. when they started making edits. Television yeah. was pretty straightforward. I, when we when it first came out in the late 40s, mm -hmm. you know, some of those advertisements people would speak straight into the camera for a half hour. Yeah. And nobody edited, nobody did anything. But yeah. then 10 years later, it became people were editing and I remember that the right wing was screaming because people they said that that wasn't accurate because mm. people had clipped some of the film. Uh -huh. And the Operation yeah. Abolition was a film that uh, became very controversial. It was underground, and it was no, like... No, it, it played around, and, uh, you but know... But, I mean, was it made by one of the networks or something, like a white paper, uh, a CBS uh, white gee, paper uh, or something, um, or was it done no, by um, You know, I, I'm, my culture? film history hmm. is a little lacking in this. Uh, it, there was a film, Point Counterpoint, that came out about McCarthy, I, the director's name, he was very well known, yeah. and he still is, uh, and yeah. uh, it explained everything in that. Um, I wouldn't try to recreate it yeah. right now, but uh, I, mo I remember that film. I kept thinking about it for years. Yeah. And, uh, because we went we went way down the path toward what could be seen as quasi-fascist uh, attitudes. Oh. Uh, I think Eastland, some of those people down south, were setting up internment yeah. camps that could be done. The yeah. Internal Security Threat Act, where they have names that are people that could be because it was. Uh, at the point where we had lost China and that communism was a sweep of history coming out of Eurasia and yeah. that the very system was being challenged. And Mr. McCarthy picked up on that paranoia oh, he did. and ran he was far from down the line. Yeah, yeah and okay, there you go. There's yeah, a I mean, that's conflicting another, Wisconsin. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there, Bob La Follette Jr., mm -hmm. you mentioned Bob La Follette. Mm. Some people claim that he committed suicide afterward because he gave up his senator seat to uh, McCarthy. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, other people said that that's not the reason he was depressed and so forth. Yeah, and that, that can happen over in that. any yeah. situation, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, so it has, the political history of Wisconsin is fascinating, and Zeidler, uh, Mayor Frank Zeidler, uh, died uh, just in 2006. Mm -hmm. He was the last socialist mayor. He ran for president in the 70s. How does a socialist mayor work within a capitalist country? And uh, I mean, how, how can that work? And how do we differentiate? And then there's the group called uh, the, the, the right wing attack PR aspect have put it so that the word liberal became a dirty word that, somehow. That happened in our put lifetime. It yes, <laughs> put it over. And that, it, you know, and that the socialist tradition, I mean, how, how uh, you know, uh, how do we differentiate these uh, attitudes toward the, the organization of, of, of the society and by progressive, they're using the word progressive now. How do we, and how do we identify what is it that constitutes a progressive attitude toward the social, we, political, economic organization. Well, you know, Harold, I've thought about this a lot. Have you? Okay, well, because, then it, uh, it's important. Well, the word liberal was swift-boated, and we both saw yeah, that. Yeah, in that election we, Mr. Carey. I mean, it was just, uh, just the liberal from back there. It started about two decades ago in the Reagan time when 
people started using the word liberal and they, the right wing would sneer. Yes. And I thought, wow, liberal means open-minded. It always yeah. did. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong with being open-minded? Right. And, uh, okay. Then it became the, the idea that if somebody was liberal, they were stupid. And they, they yeah. kind of, they got the connotation, you know, because they were so... I remember people saying, what do you want to do, save the world? And yeah. I, I thought, well, that's not, not a bad, bad idea. idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And then they yeah. would sneer at you and they yeah. would laugh like, uh, you know, what's Because you're naive and yeah. you don't understand the hard realities and right. realpolitik and right, all of right, that. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the, it's transgressed now that uh, people didn't want to use the word liberal. They didn't want to be, you know, you see politicians being scared of being called liberal. Mm -hmm. So they started saying progressive. Yeah. It sounded better. And uh, I have to admit, I would, I think progressive is actually a more accurate word. Progressive, what uh, do we mean then? You want to move forward. You want to move with forward, the, right. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to start using the word change. Like the, well, it's being used now by you know both McCain and uh, Obama. Well, Obama uh, certainly uh, is trying yeah. to bring change. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I I'm very, I'm not uh, cynical. I'm skeptical about this. Anybody coming from the Democrat or the Republican. Uh, oh, oh, the whole so, established. Way. Yes, I mean, if you look at it. And this word change that they're using, you know, they say, listen, we need to change <laughs> from the Republicans, but if we get right back into the Democrats, mm -hmm. it was the Democrats during the last century that started all the wars. Uh -huh. I mean, from Woodrow Wilson in the First World War to uh -huh. uh, Franklin Roosevelt in the Second World War, mm -hmm. Harry, Harry Truman in the Korean War, mm -hmm. they were all Democrats. That's true. Lyndon Johnson in the... Uh, Vietnam War. Well, they say they were cleaning up the mess that the Republicans had well, left on their doors. That's the way they would take it, because yeah. they each have their own narrative. Yeah. And the progressive, the idea of progressive, let's say just in a certain sense, um, progressive would be, we used to have chattel slavery, and it was a good idea to get rid of that institution. Uh, that's progressive. It through, it, yeah. It's progressive through time that we can have greater numbers of people being um, equitably treated right. as opposed to what's coming out of right. history. The, the best for the most possible, you know, the best possible things for the most possible people. That, 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 that's that kind of thing. And right. it's inclusive, and it's inclusive often of the, of the least advantage, or paying attention yeah. to the least advantage more than a hardcore, const uh, a hardcore uh, you know, right-wing view right. of it would be. They would be more interested, perhaps, in underpinning the interests of those who are already on that streetcar right. called I, success. Exactly. Yeah. I think I, I think William Grider, who was just great, recently, great yeah, writer. Right. He, he is a great writer. Yeah. He writes for the Nation, and he put it the best, just very simply, straightforward. Mm -hmm. No theories or anything. He's you cannot have a just society if you have a few wealthy people taking exploiting those who can't get there what about and, you uh, why, why is it that we so easily accept the idea that it's okay because if we look at things not so politically we have a truncated political system we don't have direct participatory democracy yet we're maybe moving that way we have a representative democracy and it gets to have an election every once in a while and they used to have town meetings that kind of thing but it, it, there's some political but we there's no question that the economy is a plutocracy oh no question that the capital assets are all owned one percent one or at the outside one. five percent virtually own all the capital and it's assets. getting worse Wait a minute, let me just, oh, that, okay, yeah. that it's getting worse, okay. But it seems to me, if I can, maybe just thinking, reflecting on human history or something, why is it that humanity has always seems to accept the idea that it's okay for all of the wealth, let's talk about wealth, to be in the hands of some leadership class and then everybody else, like from the emperors of Rome, or in Athens, Periclean Greece, it was based upon slavery. They had slavery, and they had a few people that could live the life of the mind and the spirit. You had the emperors of Rome, or the few that owned, you got a power elite, Mr. Uh, you know, C. Wright Mills talked about. Then you had the kings in the feudal period, and then you have this thing going on. And, but we accept the idea that it's perfectly all right for all the assets to be owned by a tiny group, like the king on the hill, 
and everybody else are like serfs on their estate and let the template be set by a small group of people who own and have control over the society through their ownership of the, uh, uh, the capital assets in each society through all of history. Why do we just accept that and how do we deal with the inappropriateness of that in a progressive vein and that's a big question well, that confronts I, us. Democracy is a pretty good answer mm -hmm. to that not happening, but mm -hmm. we don't have a democracy. Well, not an econ certainly not economic. Oh, that's definitely not an we economic. We don't. Uh, no. the, the, the people are corporate enclaves or whatever. A They're pyramid. like serfs. They're, They're like serfs on a feudal estate, and we just sort of accept it yeah. as the appropriate. That's what I'm asking. Why have we, the serfs, or those who are in that position, or those who represent their interests, accepted that throughout all of human history, whether it was the crowned heads of Europe, mm -hmm. or you know what I'm saying. And now it's the investment banking class and the people who own, or the people who own all the assets. It, that they just seem to accept it and say the only way for the people to get income is to have a job and do some job on master's estate. Right. And they just accept it. Well, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. I, studying history, you mm -hmm. always learn something, and I think if you go back to the uh, uh, the Incas and why were they conquered by just a few hundred uh, Spanish? Wow. And they had thousands and thousands. Well, we're beginning, we're still studying that era. Mm. We're still trying to see. It was the fact that maybe that g government wasn't so uh, attuned to the people's wishes and a lot of the people turned for Cortez. Mm. Oh, in the case and, of uh, Mexico, yeah, that's yeah. Aztec. Right? Aztec, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the Incas uh, was, who was it? For one of the... Art of Walpa. Yeah, yeah, right. But how did the, the few conquistadors take over? Well, they had I mean, steel, and they had advanced technology. Yeah, but 500 men against thousands and thousands, they could still be overwhelmed. Uh-huh, and then they, yeah. they, they, well, I know the story of Art of Walpa, if you read, uh, you know, Frazier and that and everything, but, and I did my doctorate dissertation down there. Oh, you And did? that's where I did it all, I lived a year and a half in Bolivia. The foundational culture was a different thing other than the Inca, it was called Aymara. And Evo Morales, who's now president, is the first time there's been a the representation Indian, huh? of the indigenous population ah, who ah. have been badly treated ever since, um, but Pizarro landed mm -hmm. and the Spanish took over and colonized in a certain sense for 500 years after Columbus the Europeans have colonized the rest of the world to bring their pattern and impose that and we've had empires right that, you know, we have that's, that that's what it is now I mean yeah but how is it that the, the, we, you, you talk about you had a socialist mayor in right. the, how did he how get in the back? hell does he brought a, it back, Bernie Carol, Saunders, that's God bless him, he's up in Vermont, <laughs> and he's saying he's an independent socialist, and the left, or the, the, the progressive, you'd call mm -hmm. it left or something by and large, mm -hmm. can you be right wing and be progressive? Or is that a contradiction, oxymoron? No, I think you can. You can be an individualist. I think yeah. somebody like Ron Paul in yeah. some aspects. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the Libertarian Party. The Green Party and the Libertarian Party, and I did represent the Green Party. You in did indeed. I want to talk about that. Sensenbrenner. I went against Sensenbrenner. Yeah, that's yeah, big. I ran, go ahead, talk about for Paul Congress, for a little bit. Because well, there's a the lot of passionate support for Ron Paul. Maybe you can yeah. help spell that. Well, out it's, it's the Libertarian. From. It's the yeah. idea to get the government off the backs. So uh -huh. Ronald Reagan. Reagan, used, to Reagan say. used to say that, but they didn't do it. They, mm -hmm. you know, they were the hypocrites. They really were the hypocrites. Um, as they talked about no big government, and yet they, you know, they do that all the time. But then they give their buddies uh, subsidies and everything else. Whether you, uh, we've talked about it a lot in different areas, but when uh, we, you're talking uh, about a libertarian uh, circle? No, in the no. Green Party. And, green. You know, well, how green is is green libertarian. Or is no, that but different? they do they do work with the libertarians they in will, different yeah. things. And because they've got a candidate this year, don't they? Oh, what's absolutely. His, what's the guy's name? I forget. No, 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 no. They're they're running um, the, gr the, the gr girl, the the gal from Georgia. Oh, um, Cynthia, McKinney? Cynthia McKinney is running. She was just, they had their convention in July in Chicago, uh -huh. and Cynthia is now running, and she's running with a, La with the green. a Latino as, with yeah, the green. as a vice president, and they're complaining, rightly so, that they're not getting any press. That's the Greens, all right. The Greens, I, I, yeah. They don't understand. That's the Ralph but you Nader. also have the li Libertarians. Bob, uh, uh, Barr. Bob Barr. Right. Is that it? That's he's running now, the Libertarians. So, do those two, are they in the same camp or not? Or are they well, no, okay. Are they the shock troops? So uh, I'm trying to understand the politics and how how we move forward and how do we differentiate the interests? Well, we begin by starting to get 
uh, more parties on the ticket. You think the, so? Uh, you? Absolutely. We yeah. can't have this. Is a one-party system. When I was working with the Green Party, um, we used to call ourselves the Second Party because there was the Democrats Republicans. and the Republicans. They're just they're the same party, and they just keep switching back and forth, and like you said, and they blame each other for the other, you know, whatever right. was wrong, and it just goes on the same way. And we mm -hmm. can see that with Obama mm -hmm. is raising millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. From it the comes folks. from a lot well, of it comes from, from the folks. Five well, dollars. That's because stuff. that's because uh, he seems he, to have brought in a, he's brought a in internet that, based uh, thing. He's very yeah, I hope it's yeah. I'm and his okay. rhetoric is very soaring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but, so, but, but so. why do we need? Why can't we have the appropriate patterns within the major uh, political organizations? Why do we need other parties splintering all up uh, the major questions? We can't seem to come to a common. Because agreement. money buys votes. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh. simple. Mm -hmm. It's the money talks. Yeah. Okay. The BS walks, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they go. They splinter. They say they finally see that you know this is just uh, you know being dictated by the big corporations. Okay. The big corporations are comparable to the feudal lords in the feudal period. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. That's a large thing of history that a few people run everything for their interest, and them that have get more, mm -hmm. and that's a pattern that's built into no matter what system you are. And it's still there, uh, mm -hmm. and every political entity around the world is a small group. Why do the people of the world, communism came. What do we do about communism came? They made a revolution in Russia. It came a cropper along about 1989. That yeah. did. We've had some socialist experiments in Scandinavia. China, They're McCarthy. They're successful. Mac yeah, I think so. Ma mm -hmm. Ma McCarthy was coming because uh, you know, the heartland had been taken over by the Soviet, and then China fell. So it was like a big red amoeba coming out on all yeah. geopolitical thinking about the internal logistics of a land-based system in the, the domino heartland. theory. And then came the domino theory and the edge and all that. Yeah. And that, that was what it was, that there was a socialist or left-wing notion. Now you've got China, and I saw Mr. Hu the other day talking to the Chinese government, and he said, we represent socialism. We're yeah. socialists. Well, because they they say they're going to do away. The socialist critique is going to do away with the institution of private property, of private ownership. What is the goal? They want to do away with the par private sector. What is the goal of a socialist or a, let's say, a kind of radical left wing view of why the society is in such dire dire circumstances? Well, a radical and their uh, attitude uh, toward uh, the private sector. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if the radical view. I can tell you what the uh, just the socialist view is. Uh, okay, you know, more equity. I mean, more simple, equity. Okay. I mean, that's all over the planet. I mean, everybody wants. Why don't uh, we have equity? Um, in the in the progressive view, is it is it the like in the in the Soviet Bolshevik Revolution? It was the institution of private property itself, which was an evil institution. That there be private ownership of the means of production. It should be collectively socialized among all the people. That was the premise. That, I that think that is the premise, and that still is the premise That's, of a socialist of critique yeah. of a real socialist yeah, critique. Yeah, the, the private property is just exploitation and. Uh, Okay, and uh, you know that's what happens. We see it everywhere. We see it particularly here in New York when we have a, a crisis, when people are losing their homes and every you know, mm -hmm. where do they go? Yeah, right. Um, Terrible. What's going on? The this foreclosures. Is, it makes you think of grapes of wrath. Or something. Well, you yeah. see, the latest is that was just the subprime. Now yeah. the prime yeah. loans are three times as many people threatened to lose their homes. Mm -hmm. So we're just mm -hmm. starting to see what uh, this housing crisis mm -hmm. is just beginning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the, the, what I'm trying to get at then, the Demo Mr. Obama, he will say only in terms of that's got to do with the realities of income. You, I mean, you're going to form capital, you're going to build new capital, uh, accumulate, you're going to have capital instruments created, new industries, new roadways, waterways, all the advancement of civilization and so forth. It's all going to be owned by a tiny class. And the people are not going to have any ownership of that because that's an evil institution that there be a private ownership. That's evil. You shouldn't have that. It should all be within a government. And how are we going? Is, is that well, the ideal of a socialist thing that you simply boy. do away with the entrepreneurial 
or the, uh, the private No, you can't sector. do away with the entrepreneurial. You can't because that's what's brought us most of the changes that are good. There's a problem. Yeah. There's a yeah, problem yeah. right I mean, there in terms of undercutting the That's the liberal, individualism. The, the, the progressive, uh, in, its, in its purest form, would do away with the idea of private ownership of anything other than your house. But in terms of the assets, they want to do away with that because that's what creates well, the inequity. Well, not necessarily progressive. Uh, uh -huh. I think you can, uh, that, I'm not an expert in that area, oh, but okay. I'll tell you what, I do know that you need entrepreneurs, you need the, the, the liberty of thinking. You mm -hmm. know, if you get into a, if you don't have, that's what I like about the libertarian, the individuality, and that's mm -hmm. what the Western world is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to have uh, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, any type of one thought, yeah. any ism. We don't want isms, yeah. so no yeah. more isms. Yeah. Stalin proved that. I mean, uh, this business, uh, that was the biggest mistake of intellectuals in this 20th century. What was that, it was supporting Stalin? So, so going for three decades, even the left-wing movement here in America eulogizing Stalinism. Well, they um, were eulogizing and supporting support for what Marx called the labor theory of value, that all value is created through human activity, and now you're moving to where the, as the there are technological aspects of production that don't have human being involvement. Lord Cain said, we're going to have massive technologically induced unemployment, but the productive capability of the technological instruments are tremendously exponentially productive, but you don't need the human input, and we sing the praises of work. Let's get the wages up. And everybody's working, and but they don't. The one thing they won't address is that maybe instead of all those assets being owned by a tiny group, those assets should be owned by everybody, but don't do away with the idea of the assets themselves. Well, you said two things that are really interesting there. One of them is the, the Keynesian, Keynesian uh, theory. Um, we should have more leisure. We shouldn't have. Leisure. I'm all for leisure. I know I, it. That's, we're going to get to your film, <laughs> Hippies. The hippies knew about that, leisure. And, and that's Why would one of I the good things. I want to go work on the assembly line if right. I don't have to. Right. It's like and wage slavery. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, the other thing that we want to point out is the fact that uh, there is, <laughs> there is, if we can start feeding the world, mm -hmm. there is hope. Um, that we're not, you know, that life is good and the, we're in a positive area if we just address some of the problems. And mm -hmm. hunger happens to be the number one. Yeah, well, that no is, matter what. How in the hell could a woman in Africa who has to decide which of her two babies she's going to let starve to death? because there's not enough to eat, when we know we have the capability of overwhelmingly feeding everybody. Right. Well, we have a capability that our systems won't let us realize in an equitable way. We need massive change. What you were saying earlier is, what, can a right-winger be uh, progressive? progressive. Yes, of course, a lot of the thinkers from the right understand that what brings revolution is starvation and mm -hmm. uh, the unhappy. So th do we don't uh, want do no, we, do no, we don't want, we don't the, want the, the, the turmoil of a no, revolution. No, we don't want. Why would we want uh, turmoil? Is the word we want to settle things down, and that's the problem with capitalism right now. Okay, is it's creating turmoil mm -hmm. um, through its. Yeah, uh, Naomi Klein writes it. Yeah, right. You, exactly. Yeah, right. And uh, well, I think if you saw, if you read the. Confessions of a Hitman. Yeah, oh, he Mr. Uh, what's his name? I can forget now. Starts with a P. Uh, yeah, yeah, Perkins. Perkins. Per yeah. uh, no, it's something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? I know. But yeah. I mean, that's a wonderful book to yeah. show just how much we're out there, you know, making turmoil, mm -hmm. creating turmoil, yeah. just to keep the, uh, you know, to keep the economic uh, power. Do you think that the system that's in place, and it's, the United States has been called by the French a hyperpower and that kind of thing. Zakaria now has a book out saying the post-American future and that kind of thing. So, you know, you got China, e e European Union, and the United States. But, but that there's something that the future requires that is not being advanced by the system in place. There's something new needed, and that is not being offered by the historically inherited institutions and the people representing that's well them. Yeah, that's a, uh -huh. that's a period of qualitative change, like after feudalism, there came industrialization, and there had to be something new in order to accommodate the future. We need something new other than what even our founding fathers in the United States gave us. Well, okay. we definitely do. We need do something that. new, and it's not being advanced by any of our leadership. They're just reifying the old institutions that have the inequity built into them. 
Well, one of the things that you mentioned, the founding fathers, we have to get rid of the hypocrisy. We can't be talking, I mean, all of them were slave holders. That's a big I, I mean, in, that's a big uh, in stable to I be mean, swept that, out. I mean, that is really <laughs> something. When you li start looking at that and they're posing as these, uh, you know, with all the great words mm. and the flowery sentences, which are great, you know, wonderful. Yeah, Our yeah. freedoms, our constitution is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Let's yeah. keep it in place. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they were hypocrites with yeah. uh, owning all that slavery and uh, Thomas yeah, Jefferson. They and, uh, yeah, they had slaves. Yeah, they had slaves. And uh, that, but then the history changes, and then they gave the they didn't give the women the vote until 1920. Yeah. In this, they didn't give the women in Switzerland the vote until 1776, uh, 1976, 76. something like that. Amazing, well, they wouldn't let the women yeah, vote, yeah. and everything's gone to hell since. Maybe we should take the vote away from the women. <laughs> you think we can launch that? We could start with Herald, now. Yeah. We could start with now as part of their party platform. Well, we could go on. It's really interesting. These important subjects and everything. Um, but the thing we got you in here primarily because you were producing back in 1968. We're, we're going to get back to your run with Sensenbrenner. You ran for okay. Congress and so oh, did as uh -huh. a Green. Uh -huh. and I mean, but the trouble is, uh, we only got an hour. Okay. And you have a film that you made, and maybe you could talk about the film Gold, and uh, the context of that. And we got to get a couple of clips in, so okay. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> but. I saw. I'd enjoy it. Um, mm. I'll tell you, I, I saw the Whitney Museum a retroactive, a retrospective of the 60s, and they did a 60, 1967 Summer of Love show, and I went up to see it. When was that? Uh, uh, last uh, 2007. Oh, okay, I missed it. And I went now. up to see it, yeah. and well, it wasn't very good. Really? Oh, it was, it, they missed so many things. Mm. And there I was a thinking, lot to be, there, were a lot, there was a lot yeah, there. But they, they had all this pastiche of, uh, some of the the usuals, the Beatles and the Rolling yeah. Stones, and I looked and I said, "We everybody knows that. Yeah. What are they missing?" And I looked, and they even had streets wrong in San Francisco. I lived oh. out there uh -huh. then, yeah. and I thought, "My heavens, they, they've really made a they've made a mess of this." Mm -hmm. And they had uh, they only had a few Vietnam Vietnam protest movements, and it was like it was all the da people with the. And I said, "Well, wait a second." Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. and they missed the point that. Um, there was you a could lot have going. that, but uh. there was a lot protest going on. And, and there the may have been something, but there might have been something evolving in terms of the zeitgeist, in terms of the larger evolution of events. Right. That, that was signaling that because it was going on all over the world. There was something blown in the wind. Bobby Dylan said quite accurately. <laughs> that's yeah. a cue, is it? Mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, what are you that's, doing? Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. gonna yeah, that's a cue. Because that's out a harmonica cue. Harmonica here. Uh, because mm. I was gonna. I have a theory that what's missing now. I'm trying to think of the good things in the '60s. Yeah. And the bad things. There were bad things. There mm. was overindulgence. Mm. And as my my great grandmother or my grandmother used to say, "Moderation in all things, Bob, mm -hmm. even in turnips." <laughs> and, in but, turnips, I'm more than <laughs> willing to go but along with that. The music is what's really it resonates from the '60s. You whipped out your harmonica. You're about to. And, uh, well, you up. said, you yeah. know. We don't have. We have too much of this loud rock. We just mm. forget. We mm. forget what the the values of really good folk music, and that's what brought oh, yeah. us in. We don't sing anymore. Yeah. We don't Pete drive Seeger, along. Pete Seeger, God bless him, and Bobby Dylan, right. and all oh, that. That yeah. movie about Pete mm. Seeger is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a guy that was kept off. Woody of Guthrie, you can go back. Woody to. Guthrie, yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah, and all those things that we're not doing now. We uh -huh. forget. We used to drive in a car and sing songs. Yeah, I remember. And uh, all these things, but we're lo losing the music, of the communal music, mm -hmm. sitting around a campfire. Yeah. Now, I used to work here in New York for the Merv Griffin show early okay. on, the first shows, yeah. and Bob Shanks was the producer there. Right, uh -huh. And he wrote a book called The Cool Fire. Okay. And the title meaning the cool fire is that we've forgotten about the warm fire. Mm -hmm. we, the television is the cool fire. Right. Okay. People sit around the television, yeah. but it's not feeding back. Right. Right. And right. it's the cool fire. It's a cool medium, McLuhan said. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. A, you're yeah. a man, Marshall McLuhan. He's yeah. Very good yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. He was right. very interesting. Yeah. Reading the implications of communication technology right. on consciousness itself. 
that happens. the medium is the message. The medium is more the existence of the medium is more important that we concentrate on the message. But it's the existence of the medium well, that really affects consciousness. Right, and I think music affects consciousness yeah. more than we're aware of. Uh -huh. uh, that you know, it gets us into a feeling of uh, euphoria. It oh, gets yeah. us all all sorts of things. And some of the music of the '60s was some of the best music. Oh, it was. Uh, were you at Woodstock? I wasn't. I was oh, yeah. not at Woodstock. We uh, were there, and I've, I've said other times we were there from New Pulse. It was a sister community. And if you look at the cover of the movie, the 33 and RPM archive of that, it is a red balloon. That was my red balloon. Really? And that was an eight-foot uh, weather balloon that was tethered to the ground so the people from Woodstock, because it was 60 miles south of Woodstock, would know where to assemble in that 600,000 Really? Humanity mass, and it was an epiphany. It was a really, uh -huh. it was really an important uh, event. That and, Absolutely. and what it signaled, and right. the period, and right. the time, right. Right. and it shouldn't be apologized for at no, all. No, no, there no. was something going on that we would do well to take note of, perhaps. Well, they still carry it on with the Burning Man festival, that's which right, happens they do. what next week out in Nevada. Yeah, they're, that's they're going good, yeah. out there now. But the thing is, one yeah. of the things is too. You're too damned interesting, uh, Bob. Yeah, I could <laughs> talk very easily. Well, you know, we will over coffee and that. But we got to get to your film. Right. Okay. Now you build a film and you made it back and you you set it up. As well, as I say, I went to the clips. Whitney Museum and I saw this uh, retrospective of the Summer of Love and mm. I said, well, wait a minute, I was mm. out there. Mm. They're missing a lot here. Mm -hmm. oh, well, what do I do? Mm. I said, I still have this film that was made in uh, 1968. Talk about the film. You and, made it. Uh, you were producer. I, I was producer. We had a company. You liked Buckminster Fuller. We called it Dome Films. There was oh, three really? of us. Uh -huh. And uh, there, we opened, uh, we worked uh, co collaboratively. Uh -huh. And it was San Francisco in those times. There's nothing like it. And this film Summer captures. Summer 67. Right? This was 68. We, we fed into 68, which right. became the combination, the politics. Uh, without just the summer of love, the right. politics. And this film, we, we were all looking to say, what are we going to do to stop this war at that mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. And remember in 68, this film was made in August of 68, and the clip I'm going to show is going to show the train ride we took because the story was a gold rush. Yeah. What would happen if gold was discovered again? Oh, I see. Right. And yeah. uh, that was it was a that simple was the theme, that yeah. was the whole spine of the story. And so I got some very good actors. Mm -hmm. Gary Goodrow, mm -hmm. who was uh, the staple of the committee theater back then. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. Del Close, who's okay. now he's the improv guru. Mm -hmm. And we got together and we started talking about how we're going to make a good script. And sort of like Ken Kesey play. Or exactly. Yeah, Ken right, Kesey right. was around Mary there. Mary Prankster. Exactly. That. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. That we was, took a train. Mm. and the, let's, let's look at the train Okay, now. let's look at it. What is it, a couple of minutes or something? Yeah, just a couple we're minutes. We've got a couple of clips. We're going to show the first one now. We're talking now with Bob uh, uh, Levis, and let's see if we can set up that first clip, a couple of minutes, from the film Gold, which you'll be able to see here in New York City at the theater downtown. At it's the a Pioneer Theater, 3rd and so uh, Avenue let's A. let's run that clip now, then, please. Take it away. Um, yeah, play this out until they come This is not the movie yet, but it's coming up. And they're having a hard time. <laughs> not just a mobile. There you go. What's happening? Could you let us know? Is the clip not be able to find or what? Hello, Clip, the well, first film clip. We gave them enough. I don't know. We can just talk no, until just they go. find it. They're trying to find it. Okay. Um, okay. The film itself is it's making a statement. The freedom. Yeah. You know, we want. You right. know, it's, it's about just doing. In those yeah. days, remember no, the old no. saying: "Doing no. your own thing." Yeah. And that's what we did. We went out in the woods and uh, rented a ranch out there and said we did our own thing. And yeah. there were a lot of young filmmakers in this that worked together and uh -huh. uh, collaborated. And you'll see there's a couple of hundred people. Well, that if take we get to it, this. we're just talking to it now. Mm -hmm. And you and there's a scene I know where you had a you had a, uh, a railroad car, uh, yeah. a railroad that we you rented, rented or something. We yeah. rented the train from. It was the one that Hollywood used in a lot of the westerns. So uh -huh. you'll see it. Uh, it's very familiar. Here we there go. There we go. There's part of the movie. Now. Yeah. 
Um, and we have a sound? Yeah, well, they do, but we've got to get it in here. We're going to have to go right into the... Oh, don't talk. It's being recorded. Is there sound? Yeah. Just not into here. Oh. That door should be closed. What? what the sound, we should hear it. But our mics may be open, so we shouldn't talk. Oh. And the door is open, but we're mic'd. Our mic's off? Our mic's off? Yeah. Okay, then we can't hear it. Oh, you want to hear it out here? Yes, of course. And George, George, this door is open ajar. Could you go around, please? Where is this showing now? This? Oh, I remember this from last night. I was watching some. It, it, it will be recorded on the tape. Okay. Yeah. But... Uh, We and we're 42 minutes into 58, so we've only got whoa, whoa, 16 whoa. minutes left. Okay, let's cut it. We, well, do they have a, an out point? Somebody's got a controller. They might as well Did they have an out point? No. We better, how can we okay, tell them? That's well, our job. They hadn't we'll decided, they hadn't said when they're going to stop. Well, we better stop well, right after this. What kind of animal are well, you? Well, they're not okay. even looking. You know what kind of animal you got to How do we cut them? Or? Well, I just signal it. Okay. All right, <laughs> now we're back. You know, we got a little bit confused on that. So that was really good. That was a, a good thing. And then uh, one of the problems is that we're going to run short of time. We want to get another clip in. Yeah, I, the next clip we have to get in because mm -hmm. uh, it's the convention scene. And I remember this so well. This yeah. is my favorite scene in the film because okay. this is... Uh, we were in out in this ranch in, nor in Northern California in the Sierra foothills, and it was just about ready for the Democratic convention in Chicago. In 68. In 68. Oh, and we what were filming a almost the yeah. same time, and mm -hmm. we thought, you were. we thought, well, let's. I was let's on my way from California. Okay. And I was coming back with our newborn baby boy and another younger kid, and my I wanted to take the kids to the riot. In oh, Chicago. Okay. We went right past Chicago, having come from California. We were driving from California. My wife wouldn't let us go to the no, ride with the babies in the carriage. I think Absolutely. she was Absolutely. Yeah, um, right. uh, the, the, uh, but we tried, to, we tried to mimic a convention in our inimitable way. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is so... To me, this is a, it sets up, we set up a common sense party. There's two politicians, just give me a, a little background. There's a yeah. cop and a politician, mm -hmm. and they try to take over the town. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the town's folks, says, you know, they don't know what to do, but they put them in jail. But this was the convention, this is the setup. If we could play this clip right now. Okay, well, let's um, hope we can get it rolling, yeah, and if you can hear us in the booth. 27. Yeah, 27 it, minutes into the film. 27 minutes into the film, and I guess you've got that ready. Let's hope they've got it ready so that they can roll that tape right in. Is that no, it? No, 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 no. Clip it. Stop. 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 He's stop. The, now you've got to go. Didn't they set up the second piece? Uh, it's not ready to roll? Well, well, 27 minutes into it. 
Um, but anyway, the, the idea being Try that to the find the sec 27 minutes into the DVD that you had set up before we started, please, if you can, and then talk to it. Okay. Um, but the idea is everybody gets put in jail, and then mm -hmm. from the jail time, the uh, two guys that are the only two guys still out. Mm -hmm. um, one guy is the the trickster figure, Del Close, mm -hmm. who's been following along this time, very confused. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one is the town drunk. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the town drunk, and he's out there sleeping in the junkyard, sleeping mm -hmm. off a hangover. Uh -huh. And they get together and they start <coughs> training and building weapons up in the junkyard out of old junk. Uh -huh. And from there they uh, they start, they become Che Guevara and Fidel. I see. <laughs> so they're talking about making revolution, right? right, right. That kind and, of thing. Uh, they find an old jalopy of a car and they drive it and uh, and this this is making this is making uh, using humor yeah. as a vehicle right. which there was a lot of really good so East Village other and other kinds there was all kinds of humor things going on oh. the yippies were in full force well, Paul Krasner uh, Paul Krasner was an absolute genius he was just yeah. absolutely and is Paul Krasner's He's still putting it out. I think uh, the realist. Now he I stopped the realist about 2004. It was my lifeline in that time. Yeah, I yeah, remember he was yeah. really good. Well, I don't know if you can give me any word. Maybe even talk to us in the studio if you're going to be able to find that clip. We're 46 minutes in, and maybe we could find that clip that we had clued up. And because uh, he really wants to get it in, if we can. If you're not going to be able to do it, then you could let us know or something. I hate to have to do that, but. Okay. He's, he's signaling like this, so America, maybe they found it. I don't know. Anyway, um, what a great! It was a great time, and you were out in California. I was there at the same time. Here we time. go. Here this we is go. a clip. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. They got it. Okay. Sound up. There we go. Ask y'all to stand and sing that beloved Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Can we have a little music, please? <laughs> We've got it going now. We've, we're 48 in. How long is this piece? How long? About four minutes. Four minutes. So we'll have about... Um, we're still going to have about 10 minutes left when we come back. <laughs> How come we had such trouble finding it? Uh, now I'd like to introduce to you yeah. That's all right. our beloved chairman. <laughs> Good evening, friends. I have been asked by the leaders of our community to call this town meeting together for the purpose of electing a mayor, drawing up a city charter, and having a hell of a good party besides. I pledge my life my fortunes, and my sacred honor for free election. That's my job, folks. Protect and serve. Speaking of protecting and serving, I'd like now to introduce a public servant who has served more people publicly than perhaps any other man in public life today. This man has exhibited over the years the bravery of Harding, the warmth of Coolidge, the sincerity of Bismarck, the eloquence of Dulles, the humility of Teddy Roosevelt, the far-sightedness of Herbert Hoover, and a spiritual side matched only by the spiritual side of God himself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that I go to bed every night a little more confidently, and I sleep a little better, and I dream a little easier, knowing that old VT is on my side. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next mayor of our town, Herbal Talking is everybody having a good time? I think it was the best introduction I've ever had in my political life, except one. One time down Texas, a uh, fellow who was supposed to show up didn't get there, and I had to introduce myself. small talk, now let's get down to Bryce Tax. The drumbeat of history is quickening. 
I cannot spend the time to answer detailed questions, but I can take the time to outline our program. The program and the platform of the Common Sense Party! We of the Common Sense Party pledge ourselves to democracy's greatest traditions, and after the election tonight, the solid gold deal of the Common Sense Party tomorrow! And me, myself, in my own pond today, swimming. I was bothered by them. Yeah. Oh. In your own pond? pond. pond. Yeah. We have a court. We'll have the kind of politician this town needs. A man who does nothing. Because when we had nothing done, we were happy. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah. 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 And as we go down the long winding uphill trail of the solid gold deal, I'd like to say we're going to win. We are going to win because somebody up there wants it. my head in the bucket of shit. You know what Roy Acorn says? You know what he right, says? Right, right. Roy Acorn, right. He says, horse pucky. Yeah. And I stand on that. <laughs> Roy Acorn asks you to say no to constipation. He asks you to say no to those heathen interlopers who would besmirch the honor of our town. No! Before I leave you tonight, I only want to leave you with one final word, and that is a vote for Raw Acorn is a vote against nuts. <laughs> now, friends, I think this is an excellent opportunity to announce that the votes have been tabulated. Yeah, and that all but two of the votes here were cast for us. And it's common sense to have fun. I'm assure you that we have fun on our side as well as good serious business. We're going to show you what art will be like under the solid gold society. I'd like to introduce to you right now as an example of the art of our society. Here she is, little Miss Gold Nugget. All right, so that was something else. That was uh, the gold party, the right? The convention. That, that's spoofing everything like that. Yeah, that's the yeah. uh, kind um, of thing that's really fun to do and to, 
uh, the whole system, yeah. Well, the idea that the convention, as I say, we were having this almost this simultaneously. Is a political convention. We have a political convention coming up. Right, here. we yeah. got two yeah. of them yeah. coming up. We got the so, Democrats uh, coming up in Denver and then the Republicans in St. Paul. Remember when Abby and, 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 and Jerry Rubin went to the stock exchange and threw dollar bills on the floor oh, yeah. of the stock yeah, exchange? Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. scrambled to pick them up and yeah. to try to levitate the Pentagon. Yeah. They all stood around <laughs> the Pentagon. And it was humor is really important, you know, yeah, that absolutely. kind of thing. Yeah. Particularly when you got absurd things, you know, right. like we have a lot of. Um, hmm. And, it, you know, some people just don't see the humor in uh, what's going on today, and I would agree with them in yeah. lots of ways, but uh, still you have to have something to something to lighten up what's going yeah, on. Yeah, lighten up, and it could be the, the, the best way to attack something. Rather than coming directly at all, that was McLuhan used to call hot, you know, coming all hot and, you know, about this and everything, mm -hmm. is to satirize it and to uh, put it in that yeah. particularly in the age of medium, in a cool right. medium environment. You want to do that and everything. And well, uh, thank is, God for the yippies. And we were sort of in the yippie fame, right. frame right, right, rather right. than the... Um, oh, the, yes, very much so. I mean, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I did make a film on, uh, uh, along with two of my partners, on uh, the Chicago 7. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. that was and, right. Uh, God bless. Then, uh, oh, that was my... Bill Kunstler was there, wasn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, he had Abby and uh, uh, all that. We had we had one beautiful night. As the film has been lost or stolen. One oh, dear me. Hmm. Yeah, because we had a beautiful night of filming with them. Um, in Nick, Chicago at in the Chicago. time. In Chicago. Good and, for uh, you. Yeah, we rented the uh, ABC studio, mm -hmm. and we had everybody... There was... Uh, another, I was, I, by then I was getting well known for my crowd scenes like yeah, this. Yeah, right, right, that's to, funny, yeah. To get a lot of people together yeah. and then improvise of what was doing. And right. Abby, if you remember, this was so beautiful. I, I, I want to get it to his brother or to his family if I yeah. can ever find mm -hmm. the film. Mm -hmm. Abby sits up on a ladder mm -hmm. and plays Judge Hoffman. <laughs> that was the name <laughs> oh, of the judge. Yeah, that was the name of the judge. Yeah, yeah he, I know. He yeah. was called Mr. Magoo. Yeah. But Abby... Mm -hmm climbs up in the ladder and mm -hmm. starts talking like Mr. Mm -hmm. Magoo, mm -hmm. like the judge. Yeah, he was and, great. Uh, but what we mm -hmm. did is we filmed everybody in the audience, and uh -huh. it turned out during the testimony that there was $3 million paid to undercover police. Uh -huh. So who might have stolen it was the undercover police because <laughs> we, we got everybody on tape that was Nick. there. And now, you were talking, was it tape or was it film? Was it tape? Film, I'm sorry. It was film. There yeah, was no yeah, film. Tape, there was no tape, tape until... No, no, 80. no. This was, that was a big 16, change. At that yeah. time, this was 16 millimeter film. Yeah, I guess they're going to be running our credits here now at the end oh, of this program. But this is one of so the problems. So fast. Yeah, I know. It goes so fast. It's so interesting. But Abby Hoffman was just a great guy. He was really a beautiful guy. And that, that whole spirit of that era. And your film is there. And we ought to let people know as, as they run the credits that we're going... You, you've got a showing downtown here in New at York At the Pioneer City. Theater, Avenue yeah. A and 3rd Street, uh, midnights at Friday. Uh, midnight, every midnight every, on Friday. Every Friday at midnight. You show the whole film. It's about an hour and a half long. It's Ninety-one minutes long. Uh, a program, uh, a film about the spirit of '68. You can't yeah. capture it the way we did. No, I know, no. Idea. It was yeah. really good, and uh, yeah. and I really thank you for all that. And we were talking in broad, general terms. And sometimes, remember, uh, Peter Townsend threw Abby off the stage at Woodstock because he said this is a cultural event, and Abby was talking about Vietnam, and those things conflict. It's good if you can get the art and the politics oh, guys together to, or I mean, gals. Yeah. Yeah, really. Um, yeah, if you can. The uh, I'll tell you this: this is an important time we live in. It certainly uh, is. Yeah. We have to. We really. I mean, the planet, everything. It's all real. I think so. Um, I think it is in a new kind of way, out of history. Something new is really needed, and it's not there by our no, uh, reifying normal attitudes of our politics. I want to bring system. back the, the good things of the '60s too. Good idea. That's a good idea. Music. Mm -hmm. Yep.